morning and welcome. I am Mary Ann Trout and I'll be serving as your worship associate today with the Reverend Thomas Kirchler. Today is a day of mixed blessings. We have Reverend Thomas with us, but it will be the last service he conducts with our fellowship. He will be leaving as our interim minister and taking up a post in Shoreline, Washington as their interim minister. The theme for today's service is Happy Trails. So we, we will be bidding him farewell today and dealing with our ministerial change against the backdrop of tremendous upheaval in our country. While we are welcoming all of you through the magic of Zoom, why don't you get your chalice if you have one so we can all light them together at the appropriate time. We also consider, we also invite you to consider having your video on because then we can all be together and see each other, although we're not together in person. For those of you less familiar with Zoom, you can choose either the speaker view where the person speaking fills the screen, or you can choose gallery view where everyone on the call uh, has a thumbnail sketch we can see. Um, sometimes it's good to switch from one to other, one to the other, just to see which you enjoy at the moment, and that's totally up to you. We'll begin our worship as a community of all ages joined in singing hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. glad you've chosen to be with us today. We hope you'll enjoy your time with us this morning. The Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Diego is a community drawn together by seven Unitarian Universalist principles. For you use, these are not just beliefs. They are things we covenant or agree to together to affirm and live into our being, in our lives, and in the world. Two of our set principles explicitly mention justice. In the second principle, we covenant with each other to work toward justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. The sixth 
principal enjoins us to hold up the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. During this time of increasing awareness of the justices in our country and our world, we come together to reaffirm our commitment to each other to create one just world, one just community, recognizing we are in this life together no matter what. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We are an active congregation and there are many ways to keep informed. Our newsletter, our website, and our weekly order of service announcements. If you're a visitor, we encourage you to sign up for our weekly online newsletter and emails by sending an email to office at uufsd.org and give our administrator, Tracy, your contact information. I have a couple of announcements today. The first is that although we're not physically together, our pastoral care team is still here for you. After our Sunday service, this week's pastoral listener will be Panda Sage. She'll be available from 11 o'clock to noon to offer confidential listening and support. You can reach her by emailing pastoralcare at uufsd.org. Email her your phone number and she will get back to you. I also wanted to remind you that our congregational meeting will be right after this service today. Please stay. We'll have important votes on our new board members and the budget, as well as updates from the Dream Builders, our Director of Religious Education, the Membership Coordinator, and Reverend Thomas. One way we stay connected is through rituals like chalice lighting. Chalice lighting represents our shared commitment to our values and our faith. I'll say a few words first, which reflect our theme of happy trails or parting. After I've read, I invite everyone to join in lighting a chalice or candle to symbolize our, symbolize our connection to each other. In a minute, Let's turn on gallery view and hold up our chalices, if we have them, so we can share our light together. Our reading was written by Laura Thompson. It's called Across the Distance. Across the distance, the light from within me shines, sending love to all. Across the distance, the light, your light is fuel that warms me and helps to keep my own light burning. Together, we keep the flame of hope burning bright. So we will do our, uh, we'll continue the, the normal rhythm of that ritual uh, after we welcome new members. Our shared joy, the shared joy that we all have is that we have five new members coming into our community. If you do have a personal joy or sorrow that you would like to share with your community, you can use the chat. chat. The little chat link is down at the bottom of the screen. You can just open it up, type something in. The pastoral care team will read all these, and some many some members of the congregation will read the chat. Others of us keep it out of the way, so it's not a distraction. But we keep the the record of those and reach. And the pastoral care team, especially, will reach out to you. But our primary focus today is not on those sorrows or those joys, but on the particular wonder of becoming a member of this congregation. 
this fellowship is an open community. Even with all the COVID restrictions in place, anyone is welcome to participate in our activity. But to be a member of this congregation means that you not only participate in the activities, but that you change your relationship to those activities and to the people within it. Your own identity shifts a little. Instead of just coming to the fellowship, you become the fellowship, at least one explicit part of it. Instead of feeling good about what we do, or what we represent, as a member, you step a little bit closer into that and make a promise to intentionally support in mind and body and finances to support as best as you're able the covenant and the life of this fellowship. You promise to affirm and to live into being, as Marianne said, to affirm and to live into being our covenant and our principles. At the heart of this path is the free individual in community. Back in the middle of the 20th century, you, you Unitarian Universalists tended to emphasize the freedom of individuals more. But in these times of social division, when it seems as, as though the whole world is falling apart and yet struggling to come together at the same time, the power of a community, of knowing that you belong, is very great. To experience that belonging is very great. This world hungers right now for those who seek the truth and who seek the truth in freedom and discipline and love. This world needs, this world of planet of isolated people, it needs those individuals who join together to dwell in peace. This planet of isolated people needs those individuals who practice helping one another on their spiritual and religious journeys, in fellowship, and in community. So it, it is in this understanding that we welcome new members to this congregation. And it's a special joy for me that as I leave and take with me the, the gifts that I bring to this congregation, knowing that so many more are bringing their gifts and their commitment and their values in. So it's in this understanding that I now ask each person who's being welcomed today are you ready to identify with the people of this congregation and to share your religious life with them? If so, say, yes, I am. Yes, I am after each time, after uh, when I call your name and you get and then look to see that you got your video gets highlighted. So first, Kim Caldwell. Yes, I am. Kathy Flanagan. Yes, I am. Joe. Kilian Benigno. Good. <laughs> if you can unmute, that's good. Oh, go. And then Chris, Chris, Germani, Germani uh, Kilian Benigno. Yes, I am. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Iman El Sheik. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Very good. So now Betsy will introduce each of you to all the rest of the people who are here and you can go to gallery review and see all those people. Uh, but we're gonna now introduce each of you and then we'll get to see each of you actually sign the membership book. And then we will say, all of us who are now members will say to you our welcoming words. Kim Caldwell has worked 22 years in human resources, training and management development in the San Francisco Bay Area. She is married to Rich Caldwell and the couple have two grown sons, Lucas and Tyler. Kim loves the outdoors and loves to hike, walk and play tennis. In addition to these interests, she enjoys good food, volunteering for environmental work and dog rescue. She comes to you to us from Cheryl Close as they grew up in the same neighborhood and are good friends. Kim is glad to be back in the San Diego area. Welcome, Kim. Welcome, Kim. Kathy Flanagan has been hovering around the UU Fellowship for a couple of years and finally made the commitment to join right before the pandemic hit. Born and raised in Detroit, she has now lived half her life in Encinitas. Quite a contrast. She's been married to her husband, Mickey, for 36 years. He's a Detroiter too, though they met in LA. 
go figure. Kathy is a social worker with a private psychotherapy practice in Encinitas. Her household contains her, Mickey, and their three cats, Pablo, Frida, and Dottie. She looks forward to a future time where she can connect with people without using Zoom. UUFSD has continued to impress her with the kindness of its people and positivity of UU values. Welcome, Kathy. Joe and Chris Germani Killian Benigno are the proud parents of Lucas Six and Rosie Three. Joe is a special ed teacher and Christina works as a pediatric nurse practitioner in hematology oncology. Christina's pastimes include reading, swimming, playing violin, service, social justice, and anything involving animals. Joe spends special time enjoying being a dad, music, the outdoors, social justice, service, and traveling. They are pleased to have their children grow up in a community that respects and teaches about all religions and that has values congruent with theirs. Welcome, Joe and Christina. Iman El Sheikh came to the US with her family from Egypt six years ago. She is the mother of Dana, five, and Tamim, 13 months. Iman is an engineering graduate, mechanical, and is now in a master's programs for supply chain management. She blogs and has a YouTube channel where she discusses parenting, books, nutrition, and lifestyle. Other hobbies include walking, reading, and, psych and photography. Iman did not feel at home in the U.S. until she started attending New UFSD. She finds the people here share her values, and she enjoys the community that is here for her and her kids. Welcome, Iman. Amazing and wonderful. Now I invite all who are members of this congregation, and even if you're just a friend or visitor, you can join in with these words if you wish. All who are members, though muted, say the words that are now on your screen. We receive you with open hands and hearts. As you join us, we once again renew our own commitment to this religious community. We are proud, we are proud and happy and to have you have among us. Among us. Welcome, 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 welcome. Now let us all as a congregation, some of you for the first time as a formal members of this congregation, let us sing our centering song, Spirit of Life, and then recite our fellowship covenant. May love be the spirit of this congregation. May the quest for truth be its sacrament and service be its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, and to help one another in fellowship. This is our covenant. Catherine, you got to unmute first. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to see you here today. This I'm going to do the all ages intergenerational sharing. Um, and I know it's a little different than we would normally do. But I wanted to talk to you all today about a book 
that I loved when I was a kid. And that book was The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And in this book, Lucy, the main character, is looking for the perfect place to hide during a game of hide and seek. And she opens the door to a big wardrobe, which is like a big closet. And she goes through the door and into the back of the wardrobe, and suddenly she is in another world. It is a magical world with magical creatures, talking lions, talking beavers, and there is trouble that only she can solve. Wouldn't it be amazing, right, if there was a magical world behind every door? When Lucy opened the door to Narnia, she wasn't it didn't look like anything special. It was just an ordinary door into a closet full of clothes and coats, but across its threshold, right? Going through it, going across that threshold was magic. And the great thing is that Lucy already had one foot in Narnia before she realized what was actually happening. Many of the thresholds that we cross are like this. We don't know we're crossing into another world until we're already halfway there. And the most amazing thing is that everyone is finding doorways and paths of their own. It might seem that somebody we love has left us completely. They've stepped through the door and gone onto a different path and disappeared but it usually can, turns out that they are just on a different trail than we are, that they're on a, just on a different path, and that our paths might cross again later on. We just don't know when. We cross these thresholds and go down different paths every day of our lives. And sometimes they're good paths, and sometimes they are not good paths. Every door, even our own front door, is a threshold, no matter how familiar the world we might seem to be crossing into might be. It could be magic on that path. And because of the way we tell these stories to ourselves, to our friends, to our loved ones, even to people we don't like, we open the same old door again and again, and we step into a world that is completely different and new. And the best part of the whole story is that, like Lucy, when we step into that different world, we meet amazing people. And we are privileged to see that there is magic on every path for every person. We are all on the same road to love, to discovery, and to life, but we all get there differently on a different path. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. That was really lovely. Although we're not physically together, it's tremendously important to continue to give our fellowship the financial support that we pledge, both to help those in need and to continue our work. If you are in need, please contact Reverend Thomas or the pastoral care team. There are four ways to give during this time of physical separation. They're posted on this screen. If you wish to make a one-time contribution to UUFSC or to pay your pledge, please, one, go to UUFSC website and click on the Give Online button. Or two, you may text to give, three, Use the UUFSD PayPal account shown here, or four, you may send a paper check to our office. All these methods are presented here. When we're able to meet in person, members of our congregation bring food and other goods to be distributed by the Community Resource Center in Encinitas. If you're in need of food, the CRC is there for you. If you're fortunate enough to be able to help, please take food offerings directly to the CRC and leave them on the table in the alley behind the Second Street Food Bank or make a financial donation through the website. 
I invite you to participate in these offerings to CRC and UUFSC in the spirit of generosity, giving an amount that fills you with the happiness of sharing what you can. Because of a Lakota story that the artist Paul Goebel gave the title Love Flute, I associate this instrument with the spirit of love. Because when I, when I play it, it feels as though my very heart is opening up and reaching out and connecting through the music. And so I associate this flute with the one spirit of connection and wholeness. So now I will play this flute for you to lead all of us, all in our individual locations, to connect to the deepest part of each of us that links together in the great love that, as the ancient poet said, moves the sun and other stars. So take a deep breath, just settle into a time of prayer, time of meditation, time of contemplation. Then after my music, in a time of silence, we will hear a bell followed by special music.
Thank you, Chris. That was the perfect choice for this service. So there was once a parent who took their five-year-old to the zoo. And you have been there, those of you who have been there may know that you can walk trails there. There's a tiger trail and hippo trail and eagle, tra eagle trail. As the two were walking these trails, the parent would point to an animal and say, what is that? And the child would say, a lion. Or the parent would point and say, what is that? And the child would say, a giraffe. Walking with this five-year-old, excited and proud of his child, how much the child knew. And they came along to a big gray ele uh, elephant and they said, and the parent said, what is that? And the child said, a freaking elephant. And the parent went, a freaking elephant? Why, why did you say a freaking elephant? She goes, the child says, it's right there on the sign. And the parent looks down and it says, African elephant. <laughs> so the point of this story other than just to get a little bit of laugh and loosen up the spirit, is to point out that we may all be on the same trail, walking the same trail together, but we have different views. And we have to hear one another's views and sync them together. It's an image of our approach to the religious life, the spiritual life. There are, I've been with you long enough, this congregation long enough to see the little tensions that come up, the difference of views, the ways in which it is hard sometimes to create community, to feel that you're even on the same trail or argue about which trail you're gonna take next. It's hard to be in community. It's a discipline, it's a practice to remain spiritually grounded and clear, not just struggling with the politics or practicalities of decisions, but to come together as a religious community, to bring your own spiritual groundedness into those conversations about what we see and what we know and what is true and good and beautiful. And sometimes we have to go on different trails. We know that people have come into the fellowship and left this particular fellowship, and now I am going to be leaving soon. Technically, I'm your, your minister by contract all the way to the end of July, and I can still do work for you and help you in various ways, but largely I'm leaving, and this, this ceremony marks that ending. But as we go on different paths, we still carry the same values, the same experiences, and they shape who we are. I carry you with me, and I will be present in your congregation. And you need to be attentive to that so that you can truly welcome Reverend Joe when she arrives. When I came to San Diego County, I immediately started walking and uh, jogging on trails. Of course, all my explorations of, of San Diego County trails were, was cut short in March, and I grieve that, and I hope someday I'll come back and take a few of the trails that I never got to take. But uh, my exploration began when I was in near the, I live near the Botanic Gardens. Uh, again, very thanks to, to Lisa uh, and Steve for their, the, their great hospitality. I live near the Botanic Gardens, and I would go running on the trails around the Encinitas Ranch neighborhood there and the Las Verdes Park. And I became a member of the Botanic Garden because of its beauty. I liked walking the trails. I would do that on a regular basis, walking on those trails. I went, uh, then I lived near the Manchester Preserve. And I love running. There was one place with, up on a ridge where people did rock art. They would arrange the stones into art. And I could see views all the way to the, the horizon of the ocean. One morning I heard coyotes there. Every morning I would get up, it would be the first thing I would do, I'd run on these trails in my preparation to come and work and serve this congregation. I uh, was given access to the uh, very generous uh, welcoming team. Um, get, uh, Karen Remus gave me a, a pass to the parking near Torrey Pine so that I could park there. And then I would take this loop where I go up the hill and over the, the, uh, over the hill, over the ridge, and then down back onto the beach and back to the parking. I took that trip, trip many times, loved it, loved being able to do that, looking down on the waves at one point and then going down and feeling the waves across my toes at another time. I went to the Elfin Forest three times, went out towards uh, Escondido, and then uh, one time I went far south to Lake Calavera and walked on the trails up around over the top of the the big skull, Calavera Mountain. I went to Daly Ranch and walked there. 
across by the little pools and ponds and through the woods. I went to, of course, went to San Alijo Lagoon, which is in between where I was living and, and fellowship property. Uh, went to Annie's Canyon, which is on the other side of that lagoon. So many trails, um, walking, and all the time, the landscape became part of my spirit. I've often talked about the landscape of the spirit. When people imagine beautiful places or the beloved uh, idealized realm or a place of, of wonder, often the places that they have loved, the places they've been happy to be at, become part of the images and the shape of that imagined realm of beauty and wholeness and well-being. And I would always think of you, wonder which of you had walked those trails. I would think of how we were connected by the land, by the landscape. Before I moved to San Diego County, I knew nothing about the coastal chaparral. Now I know the phrase and I understand something of that ecosystem of the animals and the plants and the birds that live in that beautiful place. Now the chaparral is part of my wholeness. It is part of the landscape of my spirit and I carry that with me. Even when I'm walking in the Pacific Northwest, I will remember, I will see plants and say, oh, hey, they have one of those down in South California. <laughs> Same plant. As I walk different trails than you walk, I will think of you all. I also think of the quality of your community. One of the things I love about this fellowship, one of the reasons that we got along so well and resonated well together is that you are positive, hopeful, and kind community. And as part of who you are is at the center. There's some UU congregations that are formed more around a, an intellectual uh, rigidity and argumentation, but you truly have at the, at the center of your community that, that love, that spirit of love and kindness. S during the past several weeks, Oh, oh, I'm not going to say too much about this, but I started reading the chat and I had to stop reading the chat because I thought I would just uh, get too, too emotional in the service, but I, I will keep the chat. I will read all the little things that people have typed into the chat. But people have been sending me uh, letters even, little paper le notes and gifts. Tracy Weiss, your administrator, just sent me a lovely card. It was really sweet. I was really glad to just get those little tokens of connection and affection and appreciation. Every Sunday, there were people who would tell me what they appreciated. This week, I had a little video chat with someone who just wanted to tell me things that they appreciated and to hear from me what I appreciated of them. You are good at appreciation and kindness, even when you get into difficulties, even if you don't always do it perfectly. That is at the heart of your congregation, your community, and hopefully that's what we offer to the world. That's what makes more of a happy trail, the willingness to be kind and loving and good to one another in this difficult life, in this difficult world, in the midst of all these struggles and the fears and worries that we have for this new global community. As I said, it just seems as though we're all coming together and all falling apart all at the same time. We do not know what will happen. But we hope we walk happy trails. That phrase, happy trails, comes from uh, Roy Rogers' show, the Roy Rogers, the TV cowboy and Dale Evans, his wife. Dale was actually the author of the song, Happy Trails to You. To you, you value that sometimes, no matter how hard our trails are, no matter how difficult our lives are, it's how we ride the trail that counts. And that's one of the lines of the song, how you live your life, how you respond to the difficulties, what well, matters the most the heart of our way of religion. It should be noted, of course, that Dale and Roy were essential links in the formation of very conservative U.S. white culture in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, they were part of that whole shift in our national motto to in God we trust, from the, the Latin phrase, um, e pluribus unum. Also supporters of, they were also supporters of the so-called defense of our nation through the House Un-American Activities Committee. And I hold that up to say that those people who were inviting everyone, inspiring everyone with a happy image of happy trails were also part of the roots of our current political divisions. 
The divisions in our world have deep roots. They go back to the earliest days of our nation, back to the most ancient re roots of human nature. So in order to walk happy trails, hopefully safe trails, we need to understand this, to admit these difficulties, these sources of division, and then still seek the wholeness and the kindness and the love that binds us together, that helps all people in fellowship. We seek in freedom the most profound and universal truths. And one part of that universal truth is that we are all connected. We are even connected to the people we disagree with, the people who don't include us. We must somehow figure out how to include them in peace and well-being may require difficult choices, but it is possible, we believe, we hold to, we hope at least, we want to live, even if we don't believe it's possible, we want to live as though it is possible. That everyone has inherent worth and dignity. And we are connected to each other in this present by our promises and our, our covenant and our principles in a beloved, and we're also connected in that beloved community. You know, the phrase beloved community doesn't just mean a well-loved community or one that gives us a feeling of love. The phrase beloved community is a theological phrase that refers to all those human beings, all those human beings, whether they know it or not, who are connected with a shared sense of history. They understand that this history uh, of China, if you're in America, or the history of America, if you're in China, is part of your history. It is part of the global human history. And in the beloved community, people understand that that shared, committed, com, that shared history binds them together in the present and they understand the promises and the hopes and the ideals and the values that bind us together in the present. And it also, the beloved community is a group of people who feel that they have a shared future, that we are going towards that shared future. So some of us may leave the trail some of us, we know all of us eventually will leave the trail or travel on different spirit trails. However, we understand that. We understand that we are all moving towards one great beloved future in the beloved community. We are all connected. This is a profound understanding, not a doctrine, not a belief, but an understanding of connection and how it shapes us and how it must shape us and sometimes how it makes our lives more difficult. We will remain connected, you, all of you, each of you and me. I will remain, I will remain connected to you, even though our trails diverge. And that was one of the things I noted about the trails. Like when I was going through Manchester Preserve, all the trails would connect, they would separate and connect, they would separate and connect. I would go on different trails. I'd find different ways of going from one to another. Sometimes I would see people off walking a trail that I had just been jogging on the other direction see them off in a distance and remember that realize that we're all connected. Though I go on a different path now, I will remember you. Some of you I only know slightly, partially, but your faces are familiar to me. Others of you I've gotten to know fairly well, at least how you are in this one year, the, these months, all of you will go with me. Wrote a little news, art, newsletter article and look at the newsletter article. My last column was about the, the no contact rule with UU ministers. I point out that that's a rule for ministers and you're bound by that rule only to the extent that you wanna support our commitment to one another, our discipline, our ethics and moral choices. But you can keep in touch. Though I may seem silent, though I may not respond to you, well, I think, well, I have to learn 200 more names, new names, new lives, new stories, because I have to learn new congregational habits, new governing styles, new limitations in a new congregation. I will still think of you and it will change how I respond to those people. I want you to think about what you, that we're together still, out in the larger community of Unitarian Universalists and the larger community of all liberal religious people in the larger community of the beloved community that pulls all of humanity forward, hopefully. Remember, 
as you journey into the future of this fellowship with Reverend Joe as your minister or during this next month where you, I, I am still your minister, but only partially, remember those connections. Let them be meaningful and powerful in shaping your life and how you live on this good earth. And as I've often said, it's really not what I do that matters the most. It's what, how what I do inspires you to live and to be. It inspires what I do inspires what you do. And so to help you in that and help you in that process, I've asked three members of your congregation to speak about the things that they will carry from this year into the year to come. And we're going to begin with our children's program, the chair of the children, uh, Children's RE Program Committee, Kristen Brandy. Hello and good morning, everyone. I want to begin by saying thank you. I'm always happy to be present um, here for this hour um, with you all. It's something I personally look forward to each and every week. Um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank Reverend Thomas um, on behalf of Ari and our fellowship community. We are grateful for the time that you have been with us, the support you've shown um, and for this congregation. Uh, I remember it was not too soon after you first arrived here. You took the time to ride your bike over and show up at the Fowler Kitty residence for our RE movie night. Uh, party. It was a fun evening and I felt like I got to know you um, and I enjoyed how you generally enjoyed being there, listening and interacting with many of the kids and families. That meant a lot to many of us and um, it was evident you prioritized coming out on a Saturday night to get to know us um, outside of Sunday worship. You continued to be very intentional as both a minister and in council about wanting to include everyone and bringing our individual and collective hopes into focus, connectedness, and shared principles into practice. During any transition time, um, especially something as important as a pastoral transition, is really a key moment uh, for any congregation and for us all to properly assess our current situations, celebrate our strengths as a fellowship, and also take appropriate steps and counsel towards rectifying what maybe wasn't working before. We've come a long way this past year and we continue to learn so much from each other. I'm grateful to be serving as RE chair and have been um, a part of some breakthrough moments together with other members. By coming together, we're working towards more communication, more understanding and stronger, more meaningful relationships. It takes a unique person with tremendous optimism, kindness, and patience to successfully navigate an interim period of any kind. Now that we have arrived as a fellowship on the other side of a year-long ministerial search, I think we would be doing a disservice to call or consider any part of this past year as interim or the in-between time, especially amid so much upheaval and change going on in our world. In reflecting on this past year, it has been my experience we're building an even stronger foundation, a more deeply committed fellowship, and um, I think it's safe to say we're really just getting started. So thank you, Reverend Thomas, for your time here and in choosing this path to be here with us. It might have been temporary, yes, but the kindness and optimism you bring is most certainly not temporary, and it has greatly enriched our fellowship. On the topic today of past merging and diverging, and during the time of COVID-19 and showing up for racial justice, we are all adapting to changes that require and demand us to think differently, act differently, and live differently. My hope is we will continue to ask ourselves what sort of congregation and world we want today, and also in 5, 10, 20 years. How we can help and do our part in dismantling systems of oppression, how we can support each other, even from a distance, how we can be the change makers and raise our little change makers too. How we choose to work with Reverend Joe and everyone here to keep continuing building these relationships will be the groundwork for change in our better future. These are the questions, this is the focus, the root of why I'm here and why our RE 
program is here. And as we come to the close with Reverend Thomas and we move into our next chapter with Reverend Joe as our minister, we look forward to continuing the work, the learning, and serving this beautiful fellowship together with you all. Thank you. Now we will hear from Chair of Social Action, Robin Sales. Good morning. I'm Robin Sales. I'm the Chair of the Social Justice Action. Good morning. I'm Robin Sales, and I'm the chair of the Social Justice Action Group, and I want to share a few thoughts about Reverend Thomas. From the time he arrived here last August, he showed up for social justice. When we met to talk about the importance of the social justice work we do here at UUFSD, I came away with a sense of comfort knowing that our new minister would be a strong ally. He proved this by attending our visioning meetings, engaging in our racial justice book club, in the environmental action group, sharing his wisdom and experience. His sermons lifted up how we as you use um, can make a difference in our community and the world. The importance of a spiritual leader urging members to act in any way they can cannot be underestimated. He inspired me. Reverend Thomas did another thing that showed his commitment to justice. He attended our showing up for racial justice group in person and virtually after a long day in the office. He was thoughtful in his contributions and we UUFSDers so appreciated his presence. He encouraged us as white allies to use our privilege to make lasting changes in our country. I could tell from that first meeting with him in August that his heart was siding with love. Thank you, Reverend Thomas, for your ministry, your guidance, your soulful flute and entertaining stories and most of all, your dedication to the first principle. We will all miss you. I'd like to introduce Rich McDonald, our board member. Good morning, everyone. I'm very grateful to be able to say a few words about Thomas and share a few memories over the past year. The most acute thing that I learned over the past year is how short a year really is. That was a quick time. We accomplished a lot, as all of us who were here this past year understand, but it happened so quickly. And here we are at the end of the year. Thomas and I spent many hours together working with the board. And I want to tell you, he's a great administrator. You've all seen the side of him, the pastoral, the worship, uh, the beautiful sentiments that he gives us every Sunday, but he's very strongly administratively and he is very supportive of all aspects of the congregation, as Kristen and Robin have told you. I'm especially appreciative of Thomas for his lifting up of our covenant of right relations. He has brought it out of the closet, literally, and dusted it off and presented it to us on a number of occasions. He not only praised it, but he's lived it as well. And his beautiful sermon today, if you go back and listen to it, is all about right relations. And really all of his sermons and all of his thinking and all of his life is about right relations. I've never heard a critical word spoken of Thomas in the congregation, which is very unusual for a group of UUs. I attribute that to Thomas living his right relations, and I now regard the covenant of right relations as one of the cornerstones of my faith, of our faith. Finally, I'm sure we all agree that he and we have come a long way in this last short year we spent together. Thomas has led us, his flock, to the promised land of Zoom, and we have videos on YouTube to prove it. 
Thomas, we will never forget you and your sidekick, Coyote. Thank you, Thomas, and au revoir. Back to you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Kristen. That was wonderful. Uh, we're moving. I remember showing up for racial justice. I also remember uh, standing out on the street on Loma Santa Fe with people protesting guns and making connections there. That is how we live, is show our values out into the world, but practice them and make them deeper, more powerful inside the fellowship. I'm glad that I've been a part of you, connected to you, in community with you. And I will miss you. As I said last week, you know, if only we had known how well this would work out. And but that's part of the the part of the the one thing, the last thing I wanted to say is part of the whole idea of the interim, is that you make these connections and let go of connections, so it allows you to understand the values of connections better. The whole point of the interim ministry is to test and allow for things to change, allow for some openness to happen, for shifts to happen, and then to realize that that's going to happen again. When Reverend Joe arrives, and to be thoughtful and kind and careful as you move into that relationship too, understanding how to love one another, to care for one another, to link ourselves together in a greater, inspiring, beloved, beloved community. To end this service, to move to the end of the service, I invite you to join with me in singing the song Blue Boat Home. The song is about traveling and about journeying and about how life is a journey. But it also reminds us that everyone, all of humanity is traveling on this great journey across the sea of stars on our one blue boat that is home.
You muted, brother. Happy trail. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, happy trails to all of you. May you travel joyful trails. May there always be, no matter how hard or difficult the trail, something of beauty shining in your heart and in your eyes. May you always have a chance to walk with others, to remember the others who walk the beautiful trail. As the Navajo prayer says, may there be beauty before us, beauty behind us, beauty around us, above and below us, always the beautiful as we walk this trail alone and together. Happy trails to you. Reverend Thomas, before we end the service, with extinguishing our chalice, we have a little surprise for you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Since we weren't able to gather together and actually give you a farewell party, we have created a virtual card or kind of a digital documentary for you to take with you. And Joe is going to share that now, and then you'll get a copy so you can look at it at your leisure, but it's to say how much we've appreciated having you here, how much we will all miss you, and how much how important you have been to us. And let me just say, after we do the um, document, the digital document, after you get it, everyone gets a chance to look at that, we will move on to the end of our service, which will be a tiny bit different. We have an extra reading before extinguishing the chalice, so I'll kind of lead you in that once we get to share um, this virtual celebration with Tom. <laughs> and everyone who has participated. So let's move on to the final part of our service. Um, we're going to start with a unison reading, and the words will be on the screen, called Love is Our Spirit. And then we'll read our ritual words to um, extinguish our chalices. We'll extinguish our chalices. Then we get to hear our postlude. And then we get to stay for the congregation meeting. So our ending has a few steps today, but I think it will be pretty self-evident what we're doing. So let's start with the words from Love is Our Spirit. And let's hold Reverend Thomas in our hearts as we join in this unison reading. Love is the spirit <laughs> of this congregation. May the songs we sing celebrate this love. May the lives we lead embody the spirit. May we go our separate ways in peace, knowing our spirits connect us always. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts, until we are together again. Mm -hmm. 